If you're restoring your fishing boat and you haven't checked out this store yet, you're doing it wrong. Come check out a store so complete with every last part you'll ever need for a DIY project in a boat restoration. One of the biggest questions I've been getting recently over time is what do I use for riveting? Is riveting hard? A lot of people are intimidated by aluminum. I'm here to debunk that. I'm here to give you a very user-friendly video on how to get past and make very cool stuff. This is an offset piano hinge I used with very thin aluminum and rivets and obviously a piano hinge underneath um, to make a very, very customized piano hinge to fit my boat. I also just framed a generation five core piece. This just sits right on a tote, gives you complete anti-flood hatching, weighs absolutely nothing. The tote weighs more than this piece and I did that all out of rivets. So the things you can create out of rivets is pretty good. Okay, so I'm using anywhere from a 1 8 inch grip, or I think this is even a 1 16th inch grip that's even shorter than that one, all the way to a half inch, or a 3 4 inch grip, all the way to a 1 inch inch grip. Uh, and I use a 1 inch grip to secure panels down to the aluminum framing, uh, like final stationary panels that I don't ever plan to, to recap again. I also have uh, rivet washers that come insanely handy when you're trying to strengthen the rivet or when you need a grippable end if you're trying to rivet something to plastic, like say a plastic tote and you know the plastic will stretch around the rivet once it mushrooms, you can put that around the end and it'll give you uh, a grip over the tote so the rivet can't pull through the tote over time. Go right over and then, and then as you mushroom it, it'll sandwich through the piece. We'll demonstrate it later. I also have, I have rivets of all sizes on my store to include closed end pop rivets. These are open end pop rivets, meaning when you, you pop these, the ends open over here. So they're not waterproof. There's closed end rivets. These are closed end. These are specifically, these are 532, 530 seconds by 1 16th inch grip pop rivets with a closed end up here. Those are specifically for hole repair. So if I have like stupid holes, cause I get some of these boats and people have drilled a million holes in them, then they're not supposed to do that. 30 second, I'll drill that to a 532 inch hole and put that in there, pop it. And it's, that's a waterproof fix. I've done that for transoms. I've done that for the backs of boats where people have, fouled up fish finders that are broken off and there are no, you know, you just need the holes patched, you can do that. Closed ends will do that fairly well. The best way to, to waterproof something, especially if you're going to attach like angle or something underneath the water line, is a full solid buck rivet or brazer head rivet like that. That's solid. So, but you need special, you need special tools to buck that. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Okay, so let's talk about tools. You need at least a fairly good drill. I use standard pop rivet guns forever. That's a standard rivet gun, and this one flexes the head. I still use this one on occasion when I have to get into a weird space and I can't get an actual grip uh, for any of my other rivet guns. This is an arrow riveter. This is a ratcheting riveter. This is actually the best riveter. This is a one-handed riveter. This is the best manual riveter that I've ever had. That, that's in there. All right, obviously that's pretty useless. <laughs> But we're going to join pieces of aluminum here together very shortly. Because I've started to do this as more of a profession for this DIY creation thing on YouTube, I really have made it a strive towards um, some better tools. Everybody recommended pneumatic tools for rivets and for stapling and for other stuff, but I've tried my best to, to avoid pneumatic setups for the moment. But this is a uh, this is a Milwaukee M12 rivet gun. It is it is great. Look at this. Isn't that great? And then when the rivets uh, are straight, they'll actually just fall back in there. But you can just pop that in there with your finger and it's in there. Okay, so let's actually join some pieces together here. This is how I would do it if I was gonna do it. I would take it. Also, you need a 3 16th inch black oxide drill bit. That's one thing I did fail to mention. Black oxide drills through aluminum the best. I don't know why. The diamond filleted drill bits suck. They don't suck for drilling through steel. I don't get why they can drill through steel really well and not aluminum, but at the black oxide drill bits, I've had the best bet when it comes to aluminum. Also, if you pulse, just quick tips, if you pulse through the aluminum, it just does better to pulse. Also does better to clean it off. I'm just using the shaved rivets to clean that end off. Okay, that's, so that's pretty clean right there. We've got a clean hole. We also have other rivets here. So say we want to join these two pieces together just for any reason.
if you're having, you can use a clamp. I'm just using the clamp for all intended purposes now. Slide your rivet in there. And the clamping gives you, because you don't want any gap when you're doing the rivet. Because if you have any looseness in the frame that you're trying to rivet together, it will like stay loose. And then you'll have to drill the rivet out. So here we go. That's pretty good, right? Now say that later on we just didn't want that. Whatever reason, that was a failed application. And drill the rivet right out. It's not hard. Now for cutting the applications or making slots like that, if you guys are wondering how I attach, how I, how I bend the angle and make them, a, I do that little side lip, that's how I do it right here, just the up close version, just if you're wondering. So I cut, so to do that, let's say we need to do that in multiple sections, we do that a few ways. I used a grinder for a long time. It's a waste of cutting disc and really loud and terribly obnoxious. Other thing you do, this is 1 16th aluminum. Obviously, if anything thicker, you're gonna have problems, but this is a, this is a set of pin snip. Somebody gave me the idea. Thank you, whoever gave me the idea. Um, then I'll cut it. That'll start making your hand pretty sore over a while. What I have switched to is a Milwaukee. Another one, this is an M12 uh, bandsaw. And I got the bandsaw because every time I go buy aluminum and they cut it in half for me to fit in my truck, they're always using a bandsaw, so. <laughs> I just cut it like nothing to make cuts all day. So, and they even have like an M18 bandsaw with an even wider section. Um, this is really good for like shorter metal. Very nice, right? So even if you're wondering, if you're wanting your project to be really, really much easier, because it takes a while. The uh, initial investment in, some, in tools like this, M12 tools, it's definitely worth it if you're gonna build a boat. Uh, I can't see you ever wanting to get rid of them once you use them. They're really a super good investment. If you're gonna put in one of these, which I don't know why you would buck a, you, there's, I'm only using 1 16th, so there's no reason to use a buck rivet because the frame would fail before a popper would ever fail. That's how, that's how this stuff is. This is we, we we frame it in a certain way so it's really strong. If you're going to do this, you would get that. You would be on the other end. This is a bucking bar. This is another little kit. So if you wanted the strongest joint ever, a solid aluminum rivet is pretty much an equivalent, if not sometimes stronger than a, a weld by itself. So how we would do that here? Let's get a let's get a hole here going. Okay, so say we have our holes drilled. Now, if you're doing this on a hole, you would need a bucking bar. This is a bucking bar. You put that on the one side, and you get the air hammer on the other side, and just and you would just tap this down so it mushrooms. This eventually mushrooms as well. Hole on one side, mushroom. It's kind of it's kind of like a two man operation. Uh, you know, if for hole repair, but just to say to join something, if you're gonna join something like one eighth inch aluminum, something that's really strong and requires uh, a better joint, so we put it over here like that. The appropriate sizing. It's so obviously that one. The punch holder, like that one's actually probably more. It's got a little divot there. You slowly kind of mushroom that over. I'm not gonna do the. I'm not gonna do the most pro job. I'm not the best at bucking rivets, but I want to give you this the concept. That's a pretty strong joint. That's never gonna come apart. I can't drill that out. It's gonna. I mean, you can, but it's gonna be hugely, terribly painful to drill that out. Much easier with an air hammer and uh, you know, the right tools. But it's how you would do it if you were gonna do it that way. So let's just say for whatever reason, I wanted to mount this aluminum piece to a piece of wood or a piece of plastic like HCP, like a tote, because a lot because a lot of these frames, including the one that you saw earlier, frames directly around the tote. How I attach that is, obviously when this thing mushrooms, it's gonna crush plastic or it's gonna crush the wood. So but we will ins insert that like so. Then, Obviously, if we mushroom that, it's going to crush that. So, I'm actually, actually not big enough rivet. All right. 
No. There's a rivet washer, 3 16th inch rivet washer. We're putting that. So now when it mushrooms, it's not gonna break or crush or crack the wood. It's just gonna go. It's a little bit longer because that was like an inch long stem. So there we go. See, no cracks in the in the wood. Straight, solid bond. That's not gonna come off unless we try to drill it out. That's on there. Yep. In terms of uh, pretty good, right? And so some other tools that might help you out immensely is a staple gun. I use a Stanley stapler. People give me a bunch of crap about this stapler. This stapler is legit built like 10 boats. I love it. Staples. Uh, obviously it does get a little taxing on your hands. So I did buy this. Um, I had an electric stapler that I bought, you know, ones from the hardware stores, they suck. They don't have the strength. Um, these ones though, that's got an insane amount of strength that actually put it in deeper than this one could. When the other kind of, the other staplers, I don't even, I don't know what they're doing, but this one's serious. Milwaukee makes some fantastic tools. In terms of getting away from pneumatic uh, setups, because I mean, really my other better setup is to go get a pneumatic setup and then get a pneumatic stapler and pneumatic riveter, which I may do eventually anyways. I think I'm gonna have to eventually gravitate that area, but I'm trying to avoid it. Milwaukee has like cordless electric tools that run off only 12 volts that do a really good job of allowing me to not ever have to get a pneumatic setup. So this is a pro, this is perfect. I can't wait to just use this because I'm coming up with a decking and that thing's gonna get used. It's gonna be put to the test. All this stuff, really super helpful. All right, so hopefully you're good on that. That's all I have for rivets. Pretty simple. It's not hard. It's it's very easy and attainable. It's just as easy as if maybe not easier at this point for like maybe doing a wood frame. A lot of people steer away from aluminum because they're intimidated. Or so if you steer away from aluminum, B because it's it's not available to you, or because it's just too expensive versus the other comparison. But the the investment you get alone off of spending the extra money to do it, it's definitely something to consider. Don't steer away from it just because you think it's hard. It's not. It's very easy. Stay tuned, guys. I got some other good content coming out in terms of answering questions. Thank you all out there. Be safe.